so in general anatomy we have almost covered most of the things and uh, introduction about the organ system so what were the organs that have been covered till now in planktonology kon kon se systems padha diye gaye hain तुम लोगों को समझ में आएगा जैसे तुम बोल रहे हो वैसे एनी वन नर्वस सिस्टम के बाद क्या क्या सिस्टम पढ़ाए गए लिम्फैटिक रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम एक्सक्रीटरी सिस्टम male reproductive system and today's class is female reproductive system so actually in general anatomy the topics that were important were till nervous system what uh, is being discussed in respiratory system excretory system male reproductive female reproductive and coming topics like special senses these are just introduction to the different organ these will be dealt in the particular gross anatomy of the chapters like in uh, thorax you will be reading about whole of the respiratory system cardiovascular system so at that place these are more important rather than here but just as to give you general information about these systems we have covered them in general anatomy so female reproductive system one term that you you are dealing with in anatomy is embryology so embryology where does this whole of the embryology is taking place जो पूरा पार्ट है एक एनाटमी का सब पार्ट एम्ब्रियोलॉजी इट्स टेकिंग प्लेस इन द यूट्रस दैट इज वन ऑफ द ऑर्गन ऑफ द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम सो यू हैव अ सब पार्ट एम्ब्रियोलॉजी वेयर द फ्रॉम द जीरो डेज दैट इज फ्रॉम द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द गैमीट दैट इज ओवा एंड स्पम टिल द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द फीटस इज द एम्ब्रियो एम्ब्रियोलॉजी इज द दैट पार्ट ऑफ द एनाटमी now what does the female reproductive system includes it has male uh, it has external genitalia and it has internal genitalia so as in male reproductive system it has internal and external similarly in female also it has external and internal genitalia what is the purpose of female reproductive system what are the functions of the female reproductive system one is to uh, form the ova another transfer of ova from the ovaries to the uterus so that the fertilization can take place purpose of uterus implantation growth of the fetus the external genitalia it is termed as vulva in female reproductive system then it has internal genitalia so in the external genital organs what are the structures that are present these are mons pubis labia majora labia minora clitoris vestibule any opening in the body is called as vestibule then orifices there is urethral orifice there is a vaginal orifice there is a covering that is hymen then a glands are there that is one of the gland is bartholin gland and the perineum what area is called as perineum so lower most part that is between the anal orifice and the vaginal orifice is called as perineum below in the pelvis in the lower part it has got lot of muscles so that area is comprising the perineal muscles you will be seeing the picture for the so what is the area that is called as mons pubis the so mons pubis is a rounded eminence that is hair bearing area that is pubic hairs are born there that is called as mons pubis so this area is called as mons pubis then you have labia majora labia majora it is a skin fold which is filled with the fat it is covered with the it is filled with the fat and it is lined with the hairs and the sebaceous glands so outer it is covered with the hairs inner it is lined with the sebaceous gland this is also called as the major lip so this is the outer lip which is called as the labia majora then labia minora 
Labia minora is the this one is the inner side of the labia minora, and it is also covered with the sebaceous gland. So inner to the labia majora lies the labia minora. So major lip and the minor lip. Now this minor lip on the upper end it is having clitoris. So this clitoris is an erectile organ which is homologous with the male reproductive part that is penis. So it is. Clitoris. Now vestibule of the vagina. Vestibule, the opening. It is bearing the two orifices: urethral orifice and the vaginal orifice. So, what is the location of the urethral orifice? It is behind the clitoris. So, first comes the clitoris, then comes the urethral orifice, then comes the vaginal orifice. so in front of the vaginal orifice is lying the urethral orifice so it is in between the clitoris and the vaginal orifice then vaginal orifice it is the lies in the posterior part of the vaginal vestibule and which is covered with the hymen it is partly covered with the hymen or completely covered with the hymen then you have bartholin glands which are homologous with the corpus gland of the male then perineum which is lying in the between the vaginal and the anal orifice so here this is the vaginal orifice which is covered with the hymen you can just see the little lining of the hymen inside the vaginal orifice and what is the location of the bartholin gland these are located outside the labia majora and their ducts are long so they are opening towards the vaginal orifice so their duct is opening inside towards the labia minora and near to the vaginal orifice so this is the vaginal orifice through which the head of the fetus can be seen so this area is the perineum which is bounded by the hip bones so lower part of the hip bones it is bounding the area which is called as perineum so pelvis is divided into true pelvis and the false pelvis the one which is in continuation with the trunk is the false pelvis and one below that is in continuation with the outer side that is the vaginal orifice will be termed as the perineum now what are the internal genital organs this we were talking about the external genitalia then comes the internal genitalia so this whole structure is the internal genital organs of the female reproductive system so you have uh, external genitalia Do any other external genitalia do you think they are present in the female reproductive system any accessory glands mammary glands are there so in the internal genitalia this is the uterus so this portion central portion is the uterus laterally if you go you have the tube these tubes are called as fallopian tube at the lateral end of the fallopian tubes which are the free ends there are the ovaries so you have the female reproductive system have two ovaries on both the sides so ovaries they are related to the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube what is what is the fimbrial end the end which has finger like projection so this end has finger like projection so these are called as fimbrial end now what is vagina it is a part of female reproductive system which is fibromuscular canal this fibromuscular canal is forming the copulatory organ of female it is extending from the vulva that is external genitalia to the cervix so cervix is a part of the uterus and where does the uterus is lying this is lying in the pelvis and other organs that are lying in this area rectum and urinary bladder so this uterus is sandwiched between the two that is urinary bladder and rectum so where is the bladder is lying and where is the rectum lying and tier 1 will be urethral orifices on the anterior side 
the anterior side you have bladder and on the posterior side GIT part that is the rectum so it is sandwiched between the bladder and the rectum now this uterus has again some parts it has fundus it has body so which part is called as the fundus very good so this part is called as fundus part fundus part have you heard of it at any other place stomach so what do you mean by fundus head of the organ empty area the part above which the ducts are opening will be called as the fundus in case of uh, stomach there is op uh, opening that is the cardiac orifice if you draw up a transverse line the area above that region is called as fundus and here the two fallopian tubes are opening if you draw a transverse line this area so this area will be called as the fundus so any area that is lying above the transverse line of the those tubes or end will be called as fundus because that area is usually filled with the gas in stomach it is filled with the gas so if you take any x ray in that area uh, of that area it will be look like a black uh, black because there is a gas is present then we have the body of the uterus and in the lower part the cervical canal is present this cervical canal is again divided into endocervix ectocervix so one which is in continuation to the body of the uterus will be the endocervix one which is lying in relation to the vagina will be the ectocervix and this between the endocervix and the ectocervix is lying the cervical canal now coming to the fallopian tube the purpose of the fallopian tube one is for transfer uh, transfer of ova another one is for the fertilization so fertilization is also taking place in the fallopian tube so there are some parts of the fallopian tube so it is divided into four parts in fundibulum ampulla isthmus interstitial so interstitial part is that part of the fallopian tube that is lying embedded towards the body of the uterus so first portion will be the interstitial part of the uterus then comes the isthmus isthmus is the junction any area that is forming the junction will be called as the isthmus so it is a junction between the uterus and the fallopian tube so the second portion will be the isthmus then is the infundibulum uh, ampulla and then the infundibulum part and last lateral most portion cimbrial end that is catching the ova that are formed from the ovaries now where does these ovaries are lying laterally in the pelvis and that area is called as the ovarian fossa later on when we will study about the ovary in the female reproductive system in the pelvis then we will be telling you what are the boundaries of this ovarian fossa what are the arterial supply how this ovary is divided into cortex and medulla so that part in detail will be dealt in the pelvis then the lining of the uterus i hope all of you know about the lining of the uterus so what are the lining so which line keeps on changing what are the changes that uh, that uh, occur in the uterus what are the changes that will occur in the endometrial line shedding okay anything else ovulation if you see histologically this is formed of uterine glands so these uterine glands they are simple tubular glands which during the process of the follicular phase uteal phase they grow so they become tortuous and their blood supply is increased and in the shedding phase these uterine glands which has become tortuous they again shed and become simple tubular glands so there is a transition from the simple tubular glands to the coiled tubular glands that occurs in the endometrial lining of the uterus then is the myometrium 
so myometrium is is a muscular organ so whole of the muscular part of the uterus is called as the myometrium and the outermost that is towards the peritoneum it is covered with the perimetrium so that peritoneum lining is called as perimetrium in case of uterus so you have endometrium myometrium and the perimetrium these are the stages of the menstrual cycle from day 1 ovum ovum is released from the ovary on day 5 it is taken up by the fallopian tube at the 12th day ovum releases into the uterus so that is the time of fertilization 13 to 16 days where it is in fertile condition then in 17 to 20 days ovum degenerates then at 26 to 28 days this degenerated ovum oozes out of vagina through the menstrual blood now what are the disorders that can be related to the female reproductive system one is endometriosis the endometrial lining it might grow grow somewhere else so there will be a cyclical pain other than the the places uterus uh, that uh, tissue has grown somewhere else so that body part is also having the same pain and it is related usually into the pelvis only so endometriosis is a condition that the tissue of the endometrium is growing at some other place also and it is also having the cyclical changes as the endometrium of the uterus is having fibrocystic breast disease so in the mammary gland cyst there may be a cyst formation so what is cyst it is a fluid filled cavity which is lined with the epithelium that is called as cyst so in case of uh, mammary gland there can be a fibrocystic breast so in that uh, in that case there will be again the cyclical changes along with the menstrual cycle in the ovulatory phase proliferative phase so this size of the fibrocystic uh, cyst that has been formed in the mammary gland will keep on increasing and regressing and similarly the pain then what are fibroids fibroids is a very common condition that is found in the uterus so it is a benign tumor it might calcify itself or it may grow bigger in size and it can lead to the hemorrhage because of the fibroids they also they are inside the internal lining of the uterus so if it is growing so big that uh, it is also growing with the uterine glands it is having the blood supply so it might shed off the blood from the fibroids also so it can lead to the hemorrhage so fibroids can be treated medically as well as they can be treated surgically then the ovarian carcinoma so ovarian carcinoma that can occur in the ovary then there can be a breast cancer there can be cervical cancer there can be inflammation of the cervix and dysmenorrhea is more of the symptom rather than the disease so any condition which is associated with the cramps is called as dysmenorrhea so these are some conditions that are related to the female reproductive system This is all in general part of female female reproductive system. 